Andy Mogul. All eyes were on the box office this weekend to see if Watchmen rose like the phoenix from the ashes of its underwhelming opening weekend, or if it continued to burn. The answer? Let's find out with some movie math. Despite Dr. Manhattan's godlike abilities, he was unable to defeat The Rock, who wrestled away the number one spot from Warner Brothers' team of vigilantes. Pulling in $25 million, The Rock bested the $22 million opening of his last hit, The Game Plan. And since that movie went on to make $90 million at the box office, The Rock should be walking tall as Race to Witch Mountain grabs a similar haul. The only potential stumbling block is Monsters vs. Aliens, which could soak up the family audience when it opens March 27th. So Dwayne, you've got one more weekend to grab as much money as you can. And tumbling 67% from last weekend, Watchmen comes in at number two with 18 million. I'm sad, but then I'm also not sad. For those of you who saw it, Watchmen screenwriter David Haitner wrote an open letter to fans begging them to see the movie again this weekend. In the letter, he compared the film to Stanley Kubrick's work and ended with a rape joke. That didn't really win me over, Haitner. Personally, I'm sensing a backlash against the film, and I think that's largely due to stunts like this letter. Overhyping a film is one thing, but acting like it's the second coming and implying people are Philistines for not recognizing that? Congratulations, Warner Brothers. You've discovered the secret recipe for making people really hate your movie. And by falling 67% at second weekend, Watchmen is now in the same category as X-Men The Last Stand and Hulk. Watchmen is now up to 86 million, with some industry experts predicting it won't even make it up to 120 million. Watchmen, outgrossed by Paul Bart Malkoff. Somewhere in England, Alan Moore is laughing. Hiding out in third place is The Last House on the Left, opening with 14.6 million. Only besting the debut of The Uninvited, it would seem audiences are tiring of horror movies. That's bad news for The Haunting of Connecticut, which obviously is arriving late to the party on March 27th. Surprisingly, I couldn't get anyone to admit to seeing Miss March on camera, so BTT was unable to cover it this weekend. Although apparently we didn't miss out on much as the film debuted at number 10 with just 2.3 million. But it's okay if Miss March can't get it up for theaters because it'll certainly satisfy 20th Century Fox on DVD and cable. And Paul Blart Mall Cop Watch continues. In its ninth week of release, Kevin James has racked up $137 million. That's a lot of donuts. Perhaps he can share them with Liam Neeson, who's close on Paul Bart's heels. Falling just 10% from last weekend, Taken is holding on at number 4 with a total of $126 million so far. With that kind of stamina, is it possible that Neeson will overtake James? Only time will tell who will be crowned the top box office underdog of 2009. I saw a movie this weekend and I'll tell you all about it after the break. This week on WePC TV. Some engineer saying that Skynet is processing at 60 teraflops a second. I don't know what the hell that means. It's a special like pool dive you can do. Rodney Dangerfield does that in Back to School, I think. He does a teraflop. <laughs> WePC TV is brought to you by Asus and Intel. You dream it, Asus builds it, Intel inside. The exact same thing, but completely different. You're watching Indie Mogul. A couple of weeks ago, I rented the game plan and thought it was really good. So I decided to see Race to Witch Mountain this weekend. I think I should have waited to rent this movie, too. Now, don't get me wrong, I love The Rock, a.k.a. Dwayne Johnson. He's got real movie star charisma. Plus, he reminds me of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone, who made some of my favorite movies growing up, so I guess The Rock makes me feel kind of nostalgic, too. But this is 100% a kid's movie. The plot is a little thin, and everything seems to happen on a small scale. For instance, the sci-fi convention this uses a backdrop isn't very convincing. It's almost like a Disney Channel movie with a really big budget for a Disney Channel movie. Now, when I think back to the kid movies I liked growing up, like Flood of the Navigator and Cloak and Dagger, they all seem very sophisticated. But if I went back and watched them again, perhaps they'd seem like Race to Witch Mountain. So maybe kids will love this movie. It certainly has some pretty good special effects, and the opening is pretty cool for a kid's movie. Is it a family classic for the ages like E.T.? No, it's not going to hold up like that. But I bet it makes for some fond childhood memories and excellent Saturday afternoon movie viewing for years to come. As always, thanks for watching Movie Math, and I'll see you on Friday as Beyond the Trailer covers duplicity, I love you, man, and knowing. I'm Grace Randolph, and we just did some Movie Math. Subscribe, comment, rate.